Hey, welcome to this first tutorial on how to create Android services. In this video, we're going to do a layout of all the buttons of the application that are going to do email, web surfing, calling, texting, and maps. And so we'll just get an application started here with a layout. So follow me through here to get the right buttons on the screen. Let's start a new project here with Android Studio, and I'll choose an empty activity and choose Next. So I'm going to name mine as Android Services, and uh, you can have it listed as I have. You notice mine has a number 2 in it. This is the second version that I've made on this, so I'm going to slide in a 2. You probably don't need a 2 on yours. All right, looks like we're ready to start programming here. I have Activity Main and the Activity Java Programming. If you can't find yours, make sure that you look in these folders here. So I'm looking in the uh, res layout and activity main to get to this main part. So let's go ahead and start working on the buttons that are going to be displayed on our screen here. So in mine, it's displaying as text view, the XML view. I'm going to switch to the design so I can see the actual place of the buttons. Okay, I've got a nice view of the screen now. So let's delete the hello world and we'll start with some brand new things. So I want to put in, first of all, an edit text. So let's go to text, and I'm choosing plain text, the second item. This is an edit text in real life. You can see that it's expecting you to enter data. So it says name as the default entry point. So let's uh, give some constraints. I will stick this to the top, to the left, and to the right. Let's give it a new name. Instead of the ID of edit text, let's call it ET, and we'll call it data. Now let's see, I want the width to be as wide as possible, so I'll choose Match Constraints. And that is supposed to take the entire width of the screen. There it goes. All right, so now let's go and put some, uh, some information up here. So the text will delete. So instead of name, we'll backspace and press Enter. And then for the hint, we can say something about hints. Let's see. Where is hint? It's down here. So. If you don't see these same properties as mine, that's because I have the option at the bottom chosen, which says show fewer attributes or view all attributes. So right now I'm fine with just the fewer attributes because hint is visible here. So what am I expecting the people to put in here? Uh, phone number, a URL, email, etc. So there's going to be lots of different options that people can enter into this edit text. Now let's put some buttons on the screen. So let's go to common, choose buttons, and I'm going to make a stack of centered buttons here. So the first button that I'm going to create is going to be for doing web. So btn underscore, and let's call it web. All right, for the text, let's give this thing a title. Let's call it web. And now let's give it some constraints. So we're going to glue it to the top and to the right and to the left. Okay, so that will allow me to launch a web browser. The next button is going to be for email. So let's put him in place using the constraints and we'll center him beneath the previous button. So the constraints are to the top of the, or actually to the bottom of the web button to the left and the right of the container. For our ID, let's call it btn email. And now for the text, let's put in the word email. Now you notice it doesn't allow me to put in email very well, so I'm going to delete that. And uh, I'm going to actually have to increase or include this as a resource. So I'm going to choose the three buttons on the right, and then choose add new resource and a new string value. And we'll call this email button. And the word is email. So now it's referencing a string called email button. Now, if you don't remember where the strings are, they are found under the values area and strings XML. And you can see the new string that I just typed in here is called email. All right, so now email has its own ID. It has its text on the front. We're ready to move on. 
Now I want to have two phone buttons. So let's drag out two buttons here. One of them is going to be for dialing, and one of them is going to be for making the call. So let's put them in their places, first of all. So let's put in the upper constraint, the left constraint. Let's do that for each button. Now I'd like them to be balanced so that they center. So let's take the constraint here from the side and attach it to the end of the previous. Now what I'd like to do is I would like to have this reciprocated and go the other direction, but it seems like that never works whenever I try to pull those constraints together. So I'm always forced to go into the text area. So for this button, I want to put in a constraint. So let's see, the constraints look like they belong here, so I'll type in constraint, and I want the end to begin at the start of a previous button, which is called button 4. There, so now they're kind of balanced. You can see that there's a, a constraint between both of them that goes both ways. All right, let's give this thing a ID. Let's call it button, and we'll call it dial. And we'll update the XML file. Button 4, we're going to call him as BTN, and we'll call this thing uh, call. All right, so for the text on the button, let's change that. So this one is called call, and the previous one is called uh, dial. There we go. So we got dial and call. Slight difference of differ, uh, meaning there. Got two more buttons to go. So this one is going to be for texting. So I'm going to set the constraint to the bottom of a previous button, and I want it centered. So let's do right and left and now his texts. This thing is going to be called text. And then for the uh, name of the button or the ID, let's call it BTN text. All right, one more button here. We're gonna call this thing maps. So go ahead and follow along if you want, or if you've already got this done, you can pretty much skip to the next video. So we've got ourselves the constraint left, right, and top, and this one is called BTN maps. And let's see, the text should be also maps. So I'm going to test out a few different size uh, screens here. So I'm going to pick a tablet, for instance. You can see that the buttons are balanced, even though they look very small. And let's pick a large phone, see what that looks like. So it looks like my constraints must be configured correctly. One more last test, I'm going to run this on an actual virtual device. All right, it looks like the application is launching and loading correctly. So here it is, we have ourselves the buttons all arranged. All right, so we're ready to move on to the next, the next video. We're going to actually implement the web service. So we'll be using the Chrome browser on your phone.